Well, hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Jujitsu 2000 here today. I'm back. I hope you're doing fantastic out there. In this video today, we have another offering from Vever. This is their 100 watt solar panel off grid kit. Now they offer this in a 100 watt, which we'll see today, and they also offer a 200 watt kit. Now this kit comes with everything that you need, with the exception of two things. You'll need a battery and you'll need a power inverter. Let's go ahead and take a look in this package and see everything that comes included with this kit. So here we have it. So right here we have the user manual. This is model S100. So here is the user manual. Feel free to pause anywhere during this section if you want to read this information a little bit longer. I'm going to move fairly slowly. There we go. Very good information. I looked at this earlier off camera and it's pretty pretty nice. Correct disposal. And here is the important stuff, the specifications of this 100 watt monocrystalline solar panel. Short circuit current is 10.4 amps. That is a lot for a 100 watt solar panel. And the uh, working current is 8.3 amps. And this puts out an open circuit voltage of 15 volts DC. Now here's everything that comes with the kit. Here's the dimensions. And here's the accessories that comes with the 200 watt kit. So very nice looking at those specifications right there. Right here you can see a layout of the solar panel itself. These are high quality monocrystalline panels. And I like monos better than polys because polys tend to not do as well in inclement weather and stuff like that where monos seem to work pretty well. So in this kit, you get the panel, you get the connectors, you get the charge controller, you need a battery and, uh, and an inverter, which it's not showing here. Uh, very nice information in this manual. So there's the parallel connectors, and that's how you would connect them to the panels. It's, it cannot be done incorrectly. It can only go one way. A monkey could put those things together. So very nice. The next thing that we see here are the wires that would connect to the battery. So you get these little alligator clamps. Very nice. These look decent. They got decent retention and they're nice color coded. Let's open these up and see approximately how long they are. I'm going to stretch these out and kind of estimate how long they are. I'm guessing those are three feet long, the wires, so they're not super long. You also have the MC4 connectors that are soldered on the end here. So you got MC4, positive and negative here, and then you have the soldered connections. These are the connections that would go to the charge controller from the solar panel. So those are about three feet long as well. You've got a series of hardware here. These are the aluminum mounting brackets. Very nice. Are those aluminum or steel? Uh, take a look here. Yes, those are aluminum. That's nice. You get four mounting brackets. And these are the same exact type that I use on my big solar array. So these are good brackets. I like that. Then you get the self-drilling screws that has the little rubber washers for water tightness. How many is there? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them it looks like. So very cool. And then you also get the nuts and bolts that goes with the... So all of this stuff is together. This is how you would mount the brackets to the panel. You also have this little box that has a charge controller. This is pulse with modulation. And as you can see, this says that it'll handle 12 or 24 volts. Solar charge controller. I think that's pretty cool. 30 amps you can go up to. Very cool. 
So then opening this, we'll see what's included in this box. Let's take a look at that charge controller. I've used these before. In fact, I had one of these in the micro house and it did great. It worked just fine. There's the terminals there. So you would connect your positive and negative from your panel after connecting the positive and negative from the battery. And then these are your load terminals. When you turn those on, they energize these ports here. And it has nothing to do with the USBs. There's other YouTubers out there that think this turns on the USBs that don't. The USBs are always going to be on. These load terminals are for providing power for low wattage draws. And this charge controller does support lithium batteries, which is very cool. And then here is the little sticker on the top there. Let's come a little closer so you can read that. So not too bad. You can put in 390 watts on a 12 volt system or 780 watts on a 24 volt system using this simple little charge controller. So we'll take a look here at this manual that comes with the charge controller. And these, these charge controllers are very, very basic, but they work. Obviously an MPPT is much better. But hey, for the price point that Vever has on this kit, this is a good controller for that, for that price point that they're hitting. You can select your battery types. Some troubleshooting information right there. And then here's some of the technical parameters of the charge controller. I'm guessing it'll be that column right there, 30 amp. But there's all the technical parameters. Right there, so very nice. And then on the back, there's nothing in there on the back. Now let's take a closer look at this solar panel. I'm very excited about this one and I want to say thank you to Weber for sending this whole kit out for me to review. Let me get this box out of the way. So here is a look at the monocrystalline panel. This is glass. This is a nice looking panel. Nice aluminum frame. Cool thing about a panel like this, these rigid panels, is you can put these on outside and the rain can rain on them and it doesn't hurt them. And there's a look at that label. Very nice. It has all the information that you would need to know about this solar panel. There's the junction box there. And wow, this is pretty nice. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and install these brackets onto the panel. So you need one bolt and nut per bracket. And as you can see on the panel here, they're already pre-drilled. You've got four holes pre-drilled. Okay, the nut setter that I found that fits these bolts is a 10 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and just set that in like that. And what we'll do is we'll take our bracket, set it down right here on the hole, just like that, and make sure that the bracket is towards the panel nice and flush. So let's just go ahead and get this nut started on the bottom side here. Just like that. And then tighten it up to whatever tightness you want. Let's go about 12. You get a grip on that nut down below. And there we go. Let's go a little tighter. 15, how about that? That's good. So that bracket is on. Let's continue. And these brackets are actually some of my favorite brackets to use when I install solar panels. That's perfect. I have a 1500 watt array that uses these exact brackets and I love them. And I'm happy to, to tell you that they include an extra nut and bolt. That's cool. So they don't give you just exactly what you need. They give you an extra in case you're clumsy like me and you drop one. I think that's pretty cool that they do that. 
we're almost there. There we go. Those brackets are now installed. So right now I'm looking at these self-drilling screws and unfortunately the 10 millimeter nut setter does not fit these screws. So we're gonna need another nut setter to drive these. So right now we're looking at my 1500 watt ground array and as you can see these are the same exact type of brackets that I used to put these panels on this array here. These brackets are awesome. So here we have a 5 16 nut setter and that's the size that we need to drive these screws. Cool thing about this kit is they give you 10 of these screws but you only need 8. So very very cool. So now that we have the brackets installed we can mount this panel to whatever surface we choose so at this time, I want to prep the charge controller for a lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm going to make these connections with these alligators and the MC4s. So now we have the MC4 connectors connected. And now we'll do the same thing with the positive and negative for the battery terminals. We'll loosen them all the way out. And then we'll get these guys right here. And just like before, I'm going to spread these apart just a little bit. so that we have a little bit of flexibility and we have a positive here right there we're going to just stick that in there tighten it down this is pretty simple and negative right there same thing put it in there and tighten it down these are good gauge wires too nice and thick I like it So now we have everything ready to go on this charge controller. You have to connect it to the battery first before you connect the solar panel. So we're gonna connect the negative here to the negative on the battery and the positive here. And when you do that, the charge controller will come to life. At this point, what we gotta do is we gotta make sure that we have the right battery type. And for lithium iron phosphate, it requires this to be B3 right here. B3 is lithium iron phosphate. So we want to go through and make sure that we have B3. We're just going to cycle through. Let's push and hold this button. Now you can see that it's changing, it's flashing, and we want B3. When we get that B3 put in there, now we can push and hold it again. And this charge controller will now be set for lithium iron phosphate. So very cool. You can see that the load terminals are turned on right now, which again, that means that these are energized. So to turn them off, we'll just push that button. So now that we have our battery type set, you can see that we are on the main screen and this is displaying our voltage of our battery. If we push to this screen, this is your float voltage. Push to this screen, it shows you your discharge reconnect voltage. Push it again and this is the discharge stop voltage. Push it again, that 24, that's your work mode and that's in reference to your load terminals push it again and it displays the battery type again b3 for lithium iron phosphate and then another press brings us back to the main display so this charge controller is now set up for the lithium iron phosphate battery and at this point we can connect our solar panel to these connections here and that's what the solar panel looks like. I didn't put all the screws in. I just put two just for a temporary setup. So we'll go to the other side and take a look at the wires hanging inside. Now right there you can see the MC4s coming in from the back side of that solar panel. We're going to go ahead and connect these MC4s. Now that we have this charge controller connected, we'll go ahead and make these connections right here. One two 
and now you can see the solar panel is telling us that we are charging. Let's take a closer look at that. On the main screen you can see that we have solar power going into the battery. There's our float voltage, our discharge reconnect, our discharge stop, our work mode, our battery type, and the main screen. And then again if we want to turn on these load terminals for low wattage devices that are 12 volt we just push that button and you can see the loads turn on when we're done we can turn them off it's a simple charge controller and very easy to hook up and now we're set the only thing that we need now if we want to electricity is to hook up a power inverter to this system something like this Ampeak thousand watt inverter would be perfect it's just going to plug into the positive and negative and then that gives us electricity it's very very simple one thing that I want to tell you is if you have a lot of Sun on your solar panels you do not want to disconnect these if you have Sun coming in or solar coming in it could damage this charge controller so if you needed to disconnect these to maybe connect these or do some kind of connections you wanted to disconnect these MC4s up above before you disconnect these so make sure that you keep that in mind this is a nice kit though I really like what they're doing here well folks that's it for today's video that's all I got for you this is the Vever 100 watt off-grid monocrystalline solar panel kit as you can see these wires are nice and thick it comes with everything you need again with the exception of the battery and the power inverter this was a nice kit the panels are nice they have 100 watt kits available and also 200 watt kits available if you're interested in these kits the link will be in the description box down below with all that being said folks thank you so much for tuning in today I hope each and every one of you out there has a beautiful day thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one bye for now everybody